Go. 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 Some days we're really on it, family, and then some days. Okay, so we're still in sine and cosine formulas, unit 11. We did law of sines where we found a side length using the fractions. Sorry, I need to connect really quick. I thought I was prepared. I'm not. Just take me one second. Okay, so we can find a missing side or we can find a missing angle. So a missing side, we just plug in our fraction. A missing angle, we have to use sine inverse. Then we put that all together last time and solved triangles. So law of sines. Today, we're moving into law of cosines, and we're gonna do law of cosines for these three examples, but we are also going to solve the triangle. So by the time we're done, we will have done law of cosines, law of sines, and then the triangle sum theorem. It's not too bad though. So to solve a triangle, when you are given two angles and an included side. So this is called side angle side or SAS. One thing to notice is that the angle is sandwiched between the two sides, even in the letters. But down here, you can see it in the triangle. So you have two sides and in the middle is an angle. So it literally has to be like a sandwich, two sides around an angle in the middle. So find the side opposite the given angle. Find the side opposite the given angle using the law of sines. So if we go down to these examples, you will see in all of them, they give us one angle. So in number one, they give us angle B. In number two, they give us angle A. And in number three, they give us angle B. So they will only give us one angle in all of these problems. Then they'll give us the two sides that make the angle. After we use the law of cosines, we are then going to find the smallest remaining side we will find the smallest remaining side. And we'll use, oh sorry, the smallest remaining angle. And we'll use the law of sines for that. And I'll show you how we know which one will be the smallest. And then lastly, we'll find or we'll use the triangle sum theorem to find the last angle. So we're going to find three things. We're going to find two angles and a side. We will do this when our triangles have a sandwich of information, meaning two sides with an angle in the middle. So you can see up here that what formula you use depends on the angle that they give you. So look on the right hand side. If they give you angle A, you use the top one. If they give you B, you use the middle one. If they give you C, you use the bottom one. What you're solving for and the angle match. So notice if you get big C or angle C, they're gonna have you find side C. Angle B, side B, angle A, side A. Even though they're different, I want you to notice that the information you plug in like the, the formula is exactly the same. You take one of the sides and square it, take the other side and square it, minus two times the sides times the angle. So on the first one, we'll pay attention to the A's, B's, and C's, but then on the next ones, we won't need to do that because I'll show you how it works if you just think about it as the sides that you have and the angle that you have. So. Let's start with number one. We are finding angle B, which says that if we're following this, um, 
box, if we're following the formula, we're going to use this middle one. So it may be helpful just to make sure that we know all of the side names. If this is big B, then the missing side length is little b. So we're only missing one side. If this is angle A, we go opposite of it, 20 is little a. Angle C, the side that's opposite it, is a length of 23. We know all of our letters now. So we plug it in to this that I highlighted in pink. So we're looking for side B. Zoom out, document viewer. So we'll do B squared, because that's what our formula says. B squared equals, zoom out, uh, A squared, so that's 20, that's a little a, plus C squared, that's 23. So we're squaring the two sides that they gave us. Then we're going to minus 2, and that's always a 2. This is always a 2. That's just part of our formula. This first side, 20, times this second side, 23, times cosine of the only angle they gave us, which is 122. So it is a big old ginormous formula that we're plugging in. We want to know B, not B squared. So we don't want to have B times B, we just want to have B. So to get that, we take the root of both sides. So we'll root B squared. Then we're going to root this whole other side. On the left, we'll just have B. So we will just get the side that's missing. On the right, we need to plug that big old thing into Desmos. So if we hop over to Desmos. If I go to the calculator, when my full keyboard shows up, the root is the second button under main. So it goes main, a squared, root. So you hit your root. Then we're going to type in 20, shift, 6, 2, plus 23, shift, 6, 2, minus 2. And then you can either use parentheses or the times button. 2 times 20 times 23. And then you can just write cosine. You don't have to put times if you don't want to. 1, 2, 2. So you literally plug that whole thing in. We're going to round to the nearest hole. So if there's a 6 right after the decimal, we're going to round from 37 up to 38. So our missing side length is 38. So step number one is always this. Step number two, we are going to use the law of signs because now we have one angle and one side pair. We now know angle B and side B. So we're going to write sine of the only angle that they gave us, 122, over the side length that we just found. And it'll always be that way. You'll take the sine of the angle they gave you over the side that you find equals then up here it tells you to find the smallest angle 
which means of the two sides you have left, you choose the smallest one. So 20 is smaller, which means the next thing that we're going to find is sine A. I'm choosing A because if this side is smaller, this angle will also be smaller. So from last time, I know that angle A is the sine inverse of 20 sine 122 over 38. So we learned that last time. You guys can plug that in. I would do it to check your rounding. That's very, did you get one very small? I got a very small one. Okay, so I'd have to go to function, sine inverse, 20 sine 122 over 38. Okay, so 20, uh-oh, if it's a 0.5, do you go up or do you go down? Up. Four and below, you let it go. Five and above, you give it a shove. You shove it up to the next number. Five and above, give it a shove. So this is 27. And then the very last step, we know angle B, we know angle A, so now we're finding the last angle, which is C. C is 180, subtract the angle that they gave us, 122, subtract this angle that we just found, 27. So that guy's going to be kind of small. 180 minus 122 minus 27, 31. Now you could fill these in as you go. I like to just do it all at the very end. So angle A is 27. There's my capital A, so it's 27. Angle B they gave me, it's 122. Angle C is the last one that I found, that's 31. Side A was given to me, it is 20. Side B was the first thing that I found, it's 38. Side C is given, that's 23. So each one will be solved this way. You do the big root, you do the big fraction, and then the simple 180 minus the angles. So let's just jump right into the next one. But this time, I'm not really going to follow the formula. I'm just going to talk you through the shortcut. They're giving us angle A, which means they want us to find side A. Notice that I didn't write A squared because I know that A is going to be equal to some giant root. Okay, well then I'm just going to take the sides that they give me. And it doesn't even matter which one you start with. So I'm just going to start with the 15. 15 squared. Then I'm going to add the other side that they gave me. 9 squared. I'm going to subtract 2. And remember that 2 is always there. It's just part of the formula. And then I'll just go in the order that I wrote these down, times 15, times 9. Cosine, 
of the only angle that they gave me. And it's cosine because this is the law of cosines. So now I plug that whole big old thing into Desmos. I'm hearing 20 something. 22. How are you guys typing that in so fast? I haven't even started yet. Okay, I've heard 22 a bunch of times. So, A is 22. Now we go right into the law of sines. So we're going to say sine of this only angle that they gave us, 131, over the side that we just found, 22. Now we're going to find the angle that matches the smallest side. So the nine is smaller, which means that we're finding B first. So sine capital B over nine. Capital B then will be sine inverse of nine sine one three one over 22. We're going to round that to the nearest whole. How many? I don't know how you guys can plug that in so fast. Okay, so we know angle A, we know angle B, so now our last step is to find C 180 minus the given angle of 131 minus the angle you just found, 18. What's that one? 31. And then I fill in my info last. So angle A was 131. They gave it to me. Angle B, I found here, it's 18. Angle C, 31. Side A was the first thing that I found, it's 22. Side B is across from this angle, so that means it was 9. Side C is across from this angle, so it is 15. You're okay? Okay. Last one, even though we don't have the triangle, I think that he's just as easy. Um, the, I don't need the triangle because I don't really follow the formula. I just do what I described in this one. So that means if they give me angle B, I'm going to be finding side B. I'm going to draw a big ginormous root. Then I'm just going to take them in the order that they give them to me. So I'm going to square the first side, 17 squared, plus square the second side, 19 squared, minus that 2 that's always there, times these side lengths. So 2 times 17 times 19. We're in the law of cosines, so we do cosine of the only angle they gave me, which is 71. 21 is what I'm hearing. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. Okay. Next up then is law of sines. Sine 
of the angle they gave me, 71, over the side I just found, 21, equals, okay, I have to choose the one that's smaller. So A is smaller, which means sine capital A over 17. That means that angle A is equal to the sine inverse of 17 sine 71 over 21. Fifty? Yeah. That's an angle. So then capital C is the last one. He's one eighty minus seventy one minus fifty. 59. You're okay? Okay. So angle A is 50. Angle B they gave me, 71. Angle C was our last step, 59. Side A they gave me, 17. Side B, we found 21. Side C, they gave me 19. What do you guys think? Do you want to try a triangle on your own or just the information? Do you want to try one of these ones on your own or one of these ones? One of the triangles. Okay. I would write it down in your notebook or on your cover page or your lined page on 130 or 131. It will be worth it, I promise. Okay. Let's do a harder one. I don't want it to even be that long. It's one of these little skinny ones. I think these little skinny ones are way hard. Okay, my triangle is one of these little, little guys. A, B is the bottom point, C is the right point. They give you B. So B is 138 degrees. They give you the left side, which is 12. And they give you the bottom looking side, that's 20. So notice it is a sandwich, side, angle, side. And then you're finding exactly what we've been doing. A, B, C, little a, little b, little c. I'll freeze this for a second and then I'll flip to my page so that you can look at my work if you want. So I'm going to unfreeze in like 15. About five. Okay, so I'm going to freeze my work up so that you don't have to flip back and forth if you don't want to.
expecting about roughly 45. Thirty, twenty. Okay, angle, oh, I didn't write them down. A, I got 26. Angle B, they gave me, it's 138. Angle C, I got 16. A, they gave me, it's 20. B, should have been 30. C is 12, and this is all of the supporting work. How'd you guys do? You did okay? So in Canvas, you have four of these. Two of them are triangles, two of them are pictures. Just kidding. Uh, the letters. Uh, and this is one of the triangles. So if you wrote it down, then you have one of them done. There's two of these. And then you have two real world ones. But just remember, it's ex all you have to do on these ones is find the side. So you don't have to solve the triangle. They just, in this one, they want you to find the distance between the players. And in this one, they want you to find the distance across the valley. So all you have to do is step number one for the last two problems. You can handle this, yes? OK. Um, just like before, I'll have you work on it for like 10 minutes, and then you can, I'll publish it so that you can check your answers. Yeah. Oh. 